Hi, welcome to Quality Quarantine Time. For those of you who haven't been watching this before, uh, I'm Tanya Opland. My husband Mike Freeman and I have just been trying to put a lot of music out into the world to make up for all the concerts that we're not doing right now. But, um, you know, there's more to the concerts than playing through our repertoire. And so I'm going to stick in a bit today that usually comes up at some point during most shows. Before, in between sets, uh, at the end, somebody wants an introduction to the instrument. What is that thing? Well, I get that with the hammer dulcimer as well, but more and more with this. So, for those of you who haven't seen one before, it is, here's my favorite description, it is the modern descendant of a medieval cousin of the violin, which um, is a stringed instrument. There's no air involved. A lot of people seem to think there ought to be because it sounds a bit like bagpipes, but it's strings and it's a bowed instrument, but the bow in this case is a wheel turned by a crank and, um, and it's keyed with a, a keyboard, but the keyboard works kind of like the frets on a guitar in reverse. So instead of pushing strings down onto a fret, it pushes frets up onto the strings to change the strength length and therefore make different notes. Now, the melody notes are only the ones inside the box here. Anything that's outside the box plays the note you have it tuned to. There are fancier models that have capos and you can change things. There are even some people have fretboards under their bass strings. There are all kinds of great ideas running around out there, but this one is a, a fairly basic, simple model, and I love it for that. There's less to go wrong. Um, but anything that's outside the box plays its one note. Those are called drone strings. And uh, when you have your drone string on, it plays its drone note. As I'm doing that, I'm going to check the tuning because that's something we do a lot with hurdy gurdies. It's doing pretty well. It always likes to jump past the note, too. So that is its note. It plays that. I have another one here. Oh, I haven't checked the tuning on this one. You'll see how far they can go. my beautiful low G drone. There's a little one up here. Now the hurdy-gurdy players out there are all going to be thinking, she's got her petit breton tuned to C, but she's tuned her trompet in D. What's she doing? Well, I like experimenting with getting around some of the limitations. For those of us playing a simple hurdy-gurdy, usually you don't change keys in an arrangement, and um, I'm going to do that. Now, on all of the strings, there are little bits of cotton to, um, for the wheel to rub against. That's kind of akin to horsehair on the bow of a violin. It gives it some texture. And uh, the rosin actually goes on the wheel, as it would on the bow of the violin. But on the violin, the horse hairs have texture. And that texture is what creates the tone of the instrument. So likewise here, the strings, if they were just bare string on this solid wheel, they would be very harsh sounding. So that moderates that a little bit. And uh, also protects the wheel and the strings from doing damage to each other, which is also a good thing. So, now you know just about all about the hurdy-gurdy, except for a few million things about cotton and rosin and tuning the tangents and um, adjusting this and that and the other thing. But it'd be more fun if I play something for you on it. <laughs> 